It can, it can set us up for failure in ministry and in missions um, because it sets us up for discouragement because there's an unmet expectation. Hello friends and welcome to Mission Viewfinder. Today I want to sh- let you in on a little conversation with a friend of mine that I hope will be a blessing to you and an encouragement whether you're a foreign missionary or not. So I want to introduce you to my friend Nathan. Nathan, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so there was a conversation we had a while back about a principle that's in the Bible that is relevant today. Can you kind of share a little bit of that? Sure. That idea is in 2 Corinthians, and it's where there was some conflict, actually, in the early church. Mm -hmm. And one had their favorite pastor and another had their favorite pastor, (laughs) kind of reminiscent of today (laughs) somewhat. But... There was this issue between Paul and Apollos and Uh their different styles of ministry. And so when Paul was writing to the church, he said, one will sow, one will water, but neither of them are the point because it's God who gives the increase. And there's that principle there Mm -hmm. in in ministry and in missions. Right. So how does that relate to us today? Like as as people, missionaries seeking to help others, how does how does that Well, in missions, whether it's home missions, foreign missions, wherever that may be, wherever we're trying to share the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, it's important to keep that principle in mind. Mm -hmm. Because as we go out to share, we have expectations Mm -hmm. of how it will go. But we have to keep in mind that God is working through multiple channels, Mm -hmm. working through multiple people Mm -hmm. to bring the good news to people. And there's actually important reasons why God does that. So what are, what are some of those reasons? Well, maybe give you a couple of, a couple of those. Sure. First would be is it's important, number one, to recognize that God could do it all himself. He could send the angels to do it, but in his plan, he's ordained that humans would be involved, that we would mm-hmm. have an opportunity to share. Mm-hmm. And he uses multiple individuals. And in doing that, he is preventing problems that could arise. Mm-hmm. And the first being that if only one person was utilized to go all the way through or to lead someone all the way through their conversion process and come to a point of a relationship with Jesus Christ, there would be too much reliance Mm -hmm. built upon humanity or upon this person Mm -hmm. rather than the dependence being upon Christ and whatever methods he may use. Right. And that would then create an undue dependence. Mm -hmm. And it would set up for the temptation that if that individual who was so instrumental in your conversion or my conversion, if they were to go astray, Mm -hmm. if they were to give up the faith or just become mistaken, we would be more likely to then follow them and to also make shipwreck of our faith. Mm -hmm. If we were just following one person, if they had been the only source of connection between us and God. And so it's to prohibit that from happening. Right. And that God has that principle of one will sow, one will water, one will fertilize, someone else will, will reap, mm-hmm. and it all works together. Yeah, and that, I'm, I'm just thinking that that sort of dependence on one person could also be a risk for that person. It is. To, f- to feel like this sort of superior, you know, position or something of being instrumental for, you know, these people or whatever, it could also even lead them in a path astray. It could, undo ownership, if you will. Right. Pride factor Mm -hmm. uh, in there as well with that. And then also, again, um, human human nature is we want to control. Right. And it could lead into control issues as well, Mm -hmm. which sometimes we see Mm -hmm. um, in different parts of Christianity as a result of that. So yeah, it's it's avoidance of all of those. I'd agree with that. Right, so need to (laughs) keep the focus on God. Absolutely. For the people that we're ministering to, but also ourselves. Exactly. It has to be both sides. Yeah. And, and also along with that is, you know, we see today p- many people have their pet minister, if <laughs> right. you will, right. their favorite minister. And I like this or I like so-and-so's broadcast. And they lean heavily upon that person, which can be a detriment for them because they're less likely to be a Berean mm-hmm. in what that pastor is saying. Right. But also um, in, in heaping praise upon a missionary or a minister, that sets up that individual for a fall. Mm-hmm. And even to the point where God may have to remove them from the field for that person's sake, right. as well as for the mission field. And so it's just not healthy right. to have that undue reliance upon humanity. 
Right. It needs to be appointed to Christ. So I want to just kind of segue here into something else that we talked about, and that is expectations. I know, you know, we each have our own expectations in lots of different areas of life. Sure. But let's just talk about ministry, especially foreign ministry or, or missionary work of this. You know, we have expectations, but then there's also others that have expectations. That's hard. I think that's one of the most difficult challenges in, in mission work is the expectations. And like you said, there's kind of those two main categories, if you will. There's lots of them, but maybe those two main categories of personal expectations that we would have, those that we place upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. And those are different for each person, but they come from our background, the influences we had, what inspired us to go into missions, what we think it will look like. There's a lot of those different expectations floating around there. And that can be challenging when the reality is often so much different mm -hmm. than the expectation. And it sets up, it can, it can set us up for failure mm -hmm. in ministry and in missions mm -hmm. um, because it sets us up for discouragement because mm -hmm. there's an unmet expectation. Right, and that and gets heavy. <laughs> it does get heavy. You know, and, and it's something we talk about in premarital counseling mm -hmm. is these expectations and preparing for marriage and, and letting God lead and not having a false expectation in all the different facets of marriage. Mm -hmm. And we don't think about it as much in missions, but I think we ought to because we have these expectations that we've placed mm -hmm. upon ourselves. And, it be influenced by maybe the mission stories we read. Mm -hmm. You know, here in this field, here in Thailand, um, there's a lot along the border in the books everyone's read about the mission work before, and we have an idea of that, but usually mission stories are essentially the highlight reel. It's mm -hmm. the condensed version of a 20, 30 year career, mm -hmm. if you will, in missions or calling in missions and all their experiences, and they're just giving those things that stood out to them, and we're not seeing in between that all of the daily life, the dishes washed, right. the setbacks, the failures, everything that didn't go right along the way, or mm. appeared not to be going right, right, didn't make the, the highlight reel, but was all important and all part of the process along the way. Mm -hmm. And so then that goes into the, the second major category of expectations, and that's those that are external, those that are placed upon us mm -hmm. by others. It can be from family, and most often from church family is really, I think, where missionaries feel the heaviest mm -hmm. burden of expectations is from that church family and what they think missions should be, mm -hmm. what mission progress looks like, and what really it comes down to a definition of success, mm -hmm. what they feel success is, and then for ourselves, what we feel success is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that success thing. It's it's a real. It can be a real challenge because how do you measure it? Do you measure it by external things of people accepting Christ or being baptized or whatever, or do you measure it by faithful work, sowing seeds or watering? You know. Is it, is it the faithful work of today that God has given me today, or I want to see big things, you know? You know, reaping is exciting. Right. When you're, when you're involved in harvest and you're seeing people make those conversions, make those firm stances, I mean, that's exciting. We all enjoy that in, right. in home missions, foreign missions. We all want to see that. Mm -hmm. But there is so much involved because it's this process, and that's really another one of those... Um, reasons why God doesn't use one individual all the way through is because it's a lengthy process to lead someone to conversion. That moment of choice is, is a short period of time, mm -hmm. but that process leading up to it is lengthy. It's throughout the individual's life as God's leading you and I as sinners back to Him right. as our Savior. And so that can't be encapsulated in one individual mm -hmm. and laboring for them. Mm -hmm. And so as a result of that, then in our expectations, Rather than having the expectation, it really would be better to have the prayer of, Lord, what part of your work do you have for me today? Right. Am I sowing today? Am I watering today? Is today a day of harvest? You know, what's today's work? And it could be multiple things throughout the day, but what is this work and help me to be satisfied with that work? Right. Yeah. Very, very good point there of just bringing it down to, yes, there's the big picture, but... <laughs> we live one day at a time. Yeah. One day at a time. So, just kind of in closing here, I have one last question that I'm going to spring on you. Okay. <laughs> if it's true, and I believe it is, I agree with you that it's not one person, it's many people that God uses for the journey of, of each person. What does that mean for missions when we're in a country and there's many places in the world where 
there are no missionaries or only one missionary. I think we have to recognize that the Holy Spirit is working mm -hmm. at all times and in all places in mm -hmm. ways that we don't see. There may be only one missionary in a location who is there doing this part of the work in that person's life. Mm -hmm. For one, it would be a sewing potentially for the first time where they hear and learn something about Jesus Christ for the first time. Mm -hmm. It may be that they've heard before and at the same time another person in the village for them it's a reminder for them it's the next stage or for them it's like okay i've heard about jesus now i'm seeing his love in action mm. by what this person is doing here so for them it's a next stage mm -hmm. there may be someone who's gone through that all and they're reaping and so you may be accomplishing multiple parts mm -hmm. and so those ones you're just sowing seed for you won't see the results potentially mm -hmm. at all. In all likelihood, you may not see those results. Right. And the same for the one you're helping along that next stage. You're just that next portion. Mm -hmm. You won't see that result. Mm -hmm. And so if we're cognizant of that and we keep that in our mind, it cuts down on our discouragement factor. Because <laughs> right. we're wanting to see this and that, right? But we don't see that. Mm -hmm. But we have to have the trust in God mm -hmm. that He is working for them if we're fulfilling our calling, if we're being the representative that he wants us to be there, then we trust it in his hands that he is working out his process and the results will be what he needs them to be. Right. And they'll happen. And then along the way, once in a while, he'll give you that harvest as an encouragement along the way when you get to see the fruition of other people's labor. Mm -hmm. And it gives you hope that your labor will also mm -hmm. be rewarded down the road and someone else will be encouraged by, by that down the road. Right. And the other thing, too, is that there's always a need for more people. You know, if, if there was, you know, a hundred where there's one today, mm -hmm. there would be such a greater... And Jesus himself said that. He says, look, you know, the fields are ready for the harvest, but where, where are the people right. to go out and labor and share their faith? Right. And that's really, again, maybe we're thinking, you know, this missionary's got to come and do this, right? But maybe in our own mission work, if I could just mention this one point, would be if you look at Christ, you look at the that the men that he cast the demons out of that came out of the hills and out of the cemeteries, right? Mm. What was the first thing that he did? <laughs> what did he tell them to do? Mm. Go back home and share what Jesus has done for you. Yeah, in they, that very short time. <laughs> they, they, they had their personal testimony. They didn't right. have a lot else, but he immediately involved them in mm -hmm. sharing because by giving, you, you make room to receive more. Right. And so maybe our missionaries are right around us and we're just missing them because we have an idea of it needs to be this right. person here. And maybe there's people along the way who, um, who you're sharing with who will see this and they may not feel like they've had the theological background or they may not have had a mission training and maybe God isn't wanting that right. in this case. Maybe he's wanting someone who is willing to simply go and tell what he has done for them and that will be the effectual witness that would be the next stage for somebody else in that field. So right. if God's laying it upon your heart, don't feel that you have to wait. Mm -hmm. If God's calling you, he will use you. He will use you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Thanks for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I hope this has been a blessing to you to be faithful in the work that you have whatever that may be, whether it's sowing or reaping or watering or fertilizing, I don't know what God's plan is for you today, but I know he does have a plan. So I encourage you to seek him to follow that plan today.